At the height of her fame, Demi Moore was the highest paid actress in Hollywood, but the second she stepped off the red carpet, she was forced to reckon with her troubled past. And her journey toward healing didn't happen overnight. This is the tragic real-life story of Demi Moore. When Moore was a child, her stepfather gave her an unimaginable task. According to the New York Times, the future actress was enlisted to help him prevent her mother from attempting to take her own life. The first attempt happened when the star was only 12 years old, and she outlined the harrowing moment when she rushed to her mother's aid in her memoir, Inside Out, writing, "...the next thing I remember is using my fingers, the small fingers of a child, to dig the pills my mother had tried to swallow out of her mouth while my father held it open and told me what to do." Something very very deep inside me shifted then, and it never shifted back. My childhood was over." And it wasn't the last time. No, there was many, many times. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call or chat online with the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255. Moore has a dating history that, at times, sounds as troubling as it is high profile. According to Us Weekly, this includes an engagement to St. Elmo's Fire co-star Emilio Estevez and a fling with John Cryer, but none of her relationships started off on a worse foot than her first marriage to rock musician Freddie Moore, who was already hitched when the pair jumped into their romance. The magazine reports that Moore met the It's Not a Rumor singer when she was 16 years old and admittedly didn't have, quote, much concern for his wife. It didn't seem she had much concern for Freddie either. She owned up to cheating on him the night before their wedding. In Inside Out, Demi revealed that she snuck out of her bachelorette party to meet up with a guy she'd met on a movie set. Though she didn't name names, actor Paul Karafotis told Daily Mail TV that he was the other man, claiming that Demi had, quote, scaled a fire escape and climbed through his kitchen window during their secret tryst. Referencing her stepfather's taking of his own life, Moore wrote in her memoir, "...I couldn't face the fact that I was getting married to distract myself from grieving the death of my father. I couldn't get out of the marriage, but I could sabotage it." Demi and Freddie separated in 1985. Moore and Bruce Willis spent much of their 11-year marriage running from the paparazzi, which probably wasn't that difficult once the pair left Hollywood. According to Harper's Bazaar, Moore bailed on her movie career at the height of her success to become a stay-at-home mom in Idaho. But this semblance of normalcy was just a veil. The actors were still two of the most famous people on the planet, and a high-profile divorce was potentially disastrous. According to reports from People and The Sun, Willis and Moore got hitched in Las Vegas in 1987 after a few months of dating. This hasty commitment seemed to be a point of contention for Willis, who, as Moore wrote in her memoir, wasn't sure if he wanted to be married. He was allegedly resentful of her acting career because it took her away from their family. Add infidelity rumors fueled by a disastrous 1996 Playboy interview where Willis admitted, "...no woman is going to satisfy a man's natural impulse to procreate, procreate, procreate," and the pair separated in 1998. By 2000, they were divorced and co parenting their three daughters, Rumor, Scout, and Tallulah Bell Willis. In her memoir, Moore revealed she's very proud of her divorce. It could have been bitter, but it ultimately strengthened her bond with Bruce. She claimed they, quote, "...felt more connected than they did before the divorce." Hollywood is notorious for its impossible beauty standards, and at the height of Moore's fame, she certainly got swept up in all of it. In Inside Out, Moore revealed that she developed an intense obsession with working out when she started training for her role in A Few Good Men. The obsession lasted five years. At first, Moore's workouts began as a way to lose pregnancy weight for the role after having her daughter scout. Moore, who was breastfeeding, ended up, quote, "...excessively exercising to the point that her breast milk was depleted of fat and scout's growth became became stunted. The actress had to start supplementing it with formula, which crushed her, but not enough to stop. During her next film, Indecent Proposal, Moore says she doubled down on her over-the-top routine and started restricting her diet until she developed walking pneumonia. She briefly relented, but found herself cutting out all carbs except for a carefully measured bowl of morning oatmeal while working on striptease. Moore wrote, "...eating disorders are crazy. They are a sickness, but that doesn't make them less real." According to People, G.I. Jane required Moore to seriously bulk up, and that actually helped end the obsession. She had reached her limit and couldn't take another round of nearly starving herself as well as intensely exercising to fight her natural body. After reflecting on her body image problems, the actress turned her home gym into an office and never looked back. 
like her parents, Moore struggled with addiction throughout her life. According to the New York Times, this included alcohol abuse, cocaine abuse, binge eating, and even admitted addiction to her third husband, Ashton Kutcher. In Inside Out, she revealed that she viewed the relationship as a sort of do-over of her 20s, a chance to experience youth in a way she wasn't previously able, but it quickly turned into an obsession. During a Red Table Talk interview with Jada Pinkett Smith, Moore admitted, "...the addiction and the codependency, like my addiction to Ashton, that was probably almost more devastating because it took me seriously away emotionally." Moore's relationship with Kutcher and the drug and alcohol relapse that came with it deeply damaged the bond she had with her daughters, so much so that Scout and Tallulah didn't speak to her for three years. In their Red Table Talk appearance, Rumor and her youngest sister explained exactly how their relationship with their mom started to unravel. Tallulah was nine years old when Moore, who spent years lying about her sobriety, relapsed. Eventually, Rumor and Scout moved out, leaving their youngest sister to navigate their mother's illness alone. When she wanted to have another baby, it was like, and then it wasn't happening, and then there was so much focus on that, it was like, oh, well, we're not enough. During that time, Tallulah felt forgotten by her mom, who was completely absorbed in her relationship with Kutcher. She admitted, "...I felt like I developed and nurtured a narrative where she didn't love me, and I truly believed it." Rumor was the only one of Moore's daughters that went in and out of contact with the star, serving as the ambassador for the family. The four women were eventually able to reconcile, and in a 2020 Mother's Day Instagram post, Tallulah revealed, "...it happened through a metamorphosis of inward self-reflection and a malleability to forgive." There isn't one thing that led to the dissolution of Moore's marriage to Kutcher. By all accounts, it seemed like a slow burn, filled with betrayal, relapse, and codependency. But above all, the couple's bond was prematurely fractured by Moore's miscarriage, which seemed like the last straw. Moore, who lost the baby when she was about six months pregnant, revealed the devastating loss in her memoir. At the time, she felt like Kutcher was too young to understand her grief, no matter how hard he tried to connect with her. She wrote, First of all, he hadn't carried this baby, and second, he was in his 20s at the time. He wasn't remotely late to the game of fatherhood. His possibilities were not running out. After the miscarriage, Moore and Kutcher still tried to conceive naturally. A few months later, they turned to in vitro fertilization. When that didn't work, Moore started researching egg donor options. The pair found a match, but Kutcher allegedly backed out last minute. Moore explained, "...Ashton told me, I don't think I can do this, and I don't know if this is working." She claimed Kutcher only gave her the go-ahead because he didn't think she'd actually actually go through with it. The pair separated in 2011 and finalized their divorce two years later, according to People magazine. Moore's marriage to Kutcher was plagued with cheating rumors, which she seemingly confirmed in her memoir. The actress detailed her tumultuous union and alleged that the Dude Wears My Car star used threesomes as a way to blur the boundaries of their relationship and justify his reported infidelity. Discussing the pair's threesomes, she wrote, "...I put him first, so when he expressed his fantasy of bringing a third person into our bed, I didn't say no. They were good people, but it was still a mistake. I was strangely flooded with shame. I couldn't shake the feeling that this whole thing was somehow my fault." Moore claimed that those threesomes opened the door for Kutcher's infidelity. He reportedly cheated on her twice, the second instance allegedly occurring with a 21-year-old woman while she was filming Another Happy Day. The year the movie premiered, the couple called it quits, though it doesn't seem like Kutcher shares the same perspective. According to The Sun, he went on a tweet spree, asking fans to text him for truth and claiming he was going to send out, quote, a really snarky tweet, but he decided to delete it instead. Butcher never publicly explained what the truth was, but it seems like there's possibly a second side to the story. Moore has dealt with substance abuse for decades. According to The Guardian, she went into rehab in the mid-1980s for drug and alcohol addiction, but she managed to stay sober for 20 years. That started to unravel during her split with Kutcher. While speaking with The New York Times, Moore revealed that her miscarriage was the tipping point, and she began to drink more heavily and abuse Vicodin. It was like the sun went down and like like a, like a monster came. This came to a head in 2012. According to reports from The Guardian and The New York Times, Moore weighed just 102 pounds when she had, quote, a seizure after smoking synthetic cannabis and inhaling nitrous oxide at a party with Rumor. During their Red Table Talk episode, Rumor admitted, "...I was there in the other room with 911 panicking, because I'm like, either my mom's gonna die and I'm not gonna be in the room and I'm gonna feel the guilt of that for the rest of my life, or I'm gonna be there and see this image of my mom that I will never get out of my head." And I think it was a moment that I w was somehow being given a 
choice. According to People, Moore checked into rehab shortly after her hospital visit with the support of her three daughters. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration's 24-7 National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-4357. Behind the camera flashes, Moore has had an immeasurably difficult life, the lowest point of which seemed to come following her split from Kutcher. According to the New York Times, her career had flatlined, her relationships fractured, and her health had begun to fall apart. Moore's organs began slowly shutting down, making simple tasks like watching TV almost impossible. Though she never revealed her exact diagnosis, she did tell the publication that, in her words, the root was a major heavy viral load. Since then, she's made a massive effort to rise again from her personal rock bottom. Moore entered rehab for, quote, trauma, codependency, and substance abuse, received treatment for her health issues, and slowly mended the relationships she had with her daughters. Just before the release of her tell-all memoir in 2019, Moore also got her acting career back on track with a number of film and TV projects. She'll also appear in the 2020 TV series Brave New World, and it seems as though things are finally looking up. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.